Good morning, dear friends. want to share a little bit today, and I really have a feeling it's just for one person. I don't know who it is, but the Lord does. Of course, anything you hear, take it to Him. Leave it before Him. Ask Him to open your mind to receive truth. He's daily changing, daily renewing our mind. By the Spirit, the Bible tells us. So don't be afraid when you start to think differently than you always have. That happens. I've been afraid of it myself. But the only way to stay on that straight and narrow path is to take everything you hear to the Lord. That's why I shared about getting alone with Him, listening, spending time, being still, waiting on Him is so important, you know? So many times I've asked the Lord, Lord, please do not let me be deceived by the voices of others, my own thoughts working against me. Please let me just hear your voice. Please show me the truth. Because in so many ways, in my early walk with the Lord, though he was in charge and he was in control, I was still depending on and believing in traditions that had been passed on to me. There's a scripture about that you can look up. Traditions and um uh, regulations and ceremonies and all these things that have been passed down to us. We must seek the Lord for the truth, not depending on all of our learning and understanding to come from a person. You know, that's what I encourage anybody to do. That is what I have done. And I guess everything I share are the things that the Lord has taught me. You know, things I've never heard. Understanding that I've never had before. It's from Him. So, I'm going to share this, and I just pray anybody would take it before the Lord. All right? Um, I, I guess I'm going to start with First Corinthians Five, verse 9 and read down a little ways there I guess uh, Paul was saying you know I wrote a letter to you I'm going to paraphrase a little bit not to associate with the sexually immoral people he said I was not including the sexually immoral of this world or the greedy the swindlers the idolaters of this world I wasn't talking about that. He said, in that case, you would have had to leave this world. He said, but rather, I was saying, do not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother, but is sexually immoral, greedy, an idolater, verbally abusive, a drunkard, a swindler. With such a man, do not even eat. Don't associate. Don't spend time with. Someone who claims to be walking with the Lord and have a relationship with Him and you see all these things about this person. That's who we are to avoid and not associate with. All right? So what business do I have to judge those outside? of the church aren't we to judge those inside God will judge the outside leave it to him but inside the church inside the household of God there are uh, things that the Lord expects of us you know so, and, and it went on to say, expel that wicked man from among you. Wasn't talking about these people out here that don't know the Lord. 
you know? And I've heard so many times, and I used to be one who believed that I cannot enjoy the company of ordinary people, like the Bible tells us. I, you'll have to look that scripture up. I don't have it right down. I thought I couldn't do that. Matter of fact, the Lord showed me that I was over here thinking I was some holy, righteous person looking down on all these people that were blind, that didn't have a relationship with the Lord, those on the outside. But he came to save those on the outside. We are here to serve those on the outside, to plead for them, protect them, have mercy and compassion on those who have um, not received a new heart yet. It was a free gift given to us of salvation, right? And so the Lord said, do not boast about it. It's a gift. Now go and do your duty and serve those who are in the same position that you once were. You know? Colossians 4, 5 says, we are to walk in wisdom toward those who are without those on the outside, redeeming the time because the days are evil, using our time in this world wisely, being attractive to those who are, the, are without. And as I told you for a long time until the Lord showed me and corrected me on it, thanks be to him for that. I was acting in a haughty way towards these unbelievers. I was acting in a prideful way. I'm just too good for that. I can't come near you. You're not holy enough. You do this, that, and the other. That's what I did. That's what I thought. That's what Paul thought. Well, I guess it was Saul, and he got changed into a new person and became Paul. He persecuted. He was a blasphemous man. No mercy. Condemning. He said, but I acted in ignorance. And so did I. And so may you be. I don't know. That's something we have to take to the Lord and examine our own heart. So, yeah, walk in wisdom towards those that are without. How are we attractive to those who do not know the Lord? How, how are we to be a light set upon a hill that gives light out for all to see? How are people drawn to us the way they were drawn to Jesus? The sinners, the publicans, tax collectors, all these that are an example for us of those on the outside, unbelievers, what attracted them to our Lord Jesus Christ? There is no way that he walked around full of pride, arrogance, a holier-than-thou attitude. There's no way. People aren't attracted to that. But they are attracted to humility. And the Lord was full of humility, wasn't he? And he wants us to be the same. Let's see here. Second Thessalonians 3, 6. We command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to keep away from who? Keep away from any brother who leads an undisciplined life. Keep away from anyone who claims to be walking with the Lord, yet we see uh, none of the fruits of the Spirit, but we might see anger and discord and malice, slander, gossip. You know, setting themselves up in some righteous, holy place, looking down on others. That's who he said don't associate with. That's who he said 
stay away from. You know? Romans 15, 7 says, Accept one another, just as Christ has accepted you in order to bring praise to God. This is loving one another, is accepting one another. It doesn't mean by accepting that person and saying, you know, I'm going to intercede for that person. I'm going to pray for that person. I see the addiction, affliction, anger, whatever it is you can see in that person. I see it, but I'm going to go to the Lord about it. I don't, I'm going to pray, Lord, that you grant them salvation, grant them a new heart, show them mercy, just like you did me. I'm going to treat them the way I would want to be treated if I were in that situation, you know, and I'm going to accept them. That doesn't mean that, well, the Bible tells us what's that scripture. It says, you know, we even hate the uh flesh that's stained by sin. We don't love their sin and accept their sin and their wrong. But we have to understand they are ignorant of the ways of God. They have a heart that is hard. They cannot obey the Lord. They cannot please the Lord. Because we must have a new heart and be born again to be able to do that. No matter how hard they try, they're not able. They have to be born again. They have to have a new heart from the Lord. That is how we're able to go about and please the Lord and obey Him. Even to obey, He gives us that. He gives us a desire and the ability to obey Him, the Bible says. That's a gift from him. It's not based on our works, so we can keep away from pride and keep away from boasting. So no, we don't like what we see, but there is a person there. The breath of the Almighty God is in that person. He also breathed into their nostrils and brought them to existence here in the world. And it matters greatly how we treat these people. It does. So accept one another, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. That is loving one another as yourself. Um, Romans 14, 1 says, accept the one whose faith is weak without passing judgment on his opinions. Also, we have those that are without, the unbelievers, but in the body of Christ, we also have those who have just getting started with the Lord, just getting to know Him, just coming in, you know, and and their faith has not grown yet, and they're still kind of wishy-washy between, you know, the ways of the world and what they learned and the ways of the Lord they're trying to learn. We have to give them time to grow. And not judge them and quarrel with them and all this kind of stuff. But accept them where they are. Trusting the Lord. Excuse me, to cause them to grow. Luke 15, 2. The Pharisees and the scribes complained. Look, this man accepts sinners. And he eats with them. You know, Jesus accepts those sinners. He walks among them. He dines with them. And he did. So he came to save. So Jude 123, have mercy on those who doubt. Have mercy on them. Haven't, didn't you also find yourself in a way, you know, that you doubted the Lord? You didn't know him, right? I didn't. I thought I did, but I didn't. These are just a few things I wanted to share. This is something that probably about a little over a year ago, 
that the Lord turned my world upside down with. I kid you not. And I've wrestled with him and sought him, searching for the truth, waiting on him to show me what he's talking about here. Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil. Y'all, we're not to be calling good those people who are judging and um, in arrogance and in pride sitting and ruling over people. We're called to go and serve all right. Doesn't mean that you go and go and have to hang out with them and make friends and all this kind of stuff. But when you pass by one that you see has a need, when you hear of one, rather than joining in with the counsel of those who scorn and mock, go to the Lord on behalf of that person. Because Jesus said, just as you have treated the least of these, you have treated me. He greatly cares. You know? And if anybody thinks differently about this matter, I pray the Lord to make it clear to anybody. This is what the Lord showed me that I was doing myself. And it broke my heart. And I've afflicted many people close to me I've afflicted and harassed and oppressed and judged and called them out, talked about them, pointed out all their sin. When the Lord wanted me, he was trying to teach me, look, have mercy on them. Care about the burdens that they're carrying and what they're afflicted with. Learn how to be humble and walk with me. And let me show you how to be a fisher of men. Let me show you. Let me make you into someone. A light that others will be drawn to. By your compassion. And your kindness. And your gentleness. And your humility. And your love and acceptance. Of my people. And that is why I'm here. And that is what I'm learning. That's why I know the Lord has me here on this earth to know him, to make him known in a quiet way behind closed doors. The Lord hears our prayers, you know, and he answers our prayers, those pleadings and requests for the fatherless, the orphan, the widow, the naked and the blind. He hears our prayers for them. And that's why I'm here to learn how to love others as myself. The Lord showed me that. It's the only reason I'm here. And everything that happens and everybody that comes against me, every contention, everything is only there to serve that purpose in me. To continually go before the Lord and search my own heart. You know, depending on the Lord to correct what needs to be corrected. And to make me a person that is humble and loving and kind to all these around me. So I hope that might help somebody today to think about. Take it to the Lord and talk to Him about it. Alright? I love you. And I want all of us to grow in the Lord and His ways, to be made more like Him. And that's what He does for us. That's what He does. Amen. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.